Welcome back. In this video, we'll start working on the final feature for our game, the threefold repetition rule. This rule states that a player can claim a draw if the same game state occurs three times. If that happens in our game, we'll automatically end the game with a draw, just like we did for the 50 move rule. But when exactly are two states considered the same? First of all, the states must contain the same pieces on the same squares. If two pieces of the same color and type have swapped places, it does not violate this criterion. The states may still be considered equal. It must also be the same player's turn to move. Two states may agree on the pieces and their positions, but if it's not the same player's turn to move, they are not considered the same. Finally, both states must have the same available moves. Two states can satisfy the previous two criteria and still have different available moves. For example, let's say that in the left state, the black pawn has just advanced two squares, whereas in the right state, it was moved a couple of turns ago. On the left, the white pawn can capture en passant, but that is not possible on the right. Because the available moves differ, these two states are not the same. What if there was no white pawn in position to capture en passant? In this case, it would not matter when the black pawn was moved. The available moves would be the same, so these states are equal. We also have to be careful with castling moves. Let's say that in the left state, the black king has not moved, whereas in the right state, it has. The rook has not moved in either state. On the left, black can castle kingside but not on the right. Therefore, these two states are not considered the same. What if castling was not possible in either state, say, because there was a piece between the king and the rook? Then the states would still be considered different. That's because on the left, black still has the castling move available for later in the game. But on the right, Black cannot castle, no matter what happens. So, to determine if two states are equal, we must compare casting rights for both players. We start in the board class. Here, we'll write a few methods which check a player's castling rights. That is, if he can castle either now or potentially in the future. We start with a helper method called isOnMovedKingAndRook. It takes the initial position of a king and a rook as parameters and returns true if those positions contain an unmoved king and unmoved rook respectively. If either position is empty, then at least one piece has moved, so we return false. Otherwise, if both positions contain pieces, we get them. And return true if they are indeed a king and a rook. and both are unmoved. Note, 
it's actually not necessary to check the type of the pieces here. Assuming the method is only called with the initial position of a king and a rook respectively, and there are unmoved pieces at those positions, then they must have the correct types. For clarity, I'll leave the code as is. Okay, let's write a method called castle right king side. It returns true if the given player has the right to castle kingside. Again, this means that he can castle either in the current state or potentially later in the game. All we have to do is check if the player's king and right rook are unmoved. First, we check the player. If it's white, We call our helper method, passing in the initial position of the white king and the white rook on the right. Similarly, if the player is black, we call the method with the initial position of the black king and the black rook on the right. And we'll add a dummy case for invalid players. Next, let's write a similar method for queenside castling. I'll just copy and paste this and change the column for the root positions. Great. That's it for casting. But we also need a convenient way to check if a player can capture on percent in the current state. First, we get the pawn skip position for the opponent, also known as the on percent target square. If it's null, it means the opponent did not move a pawn two squares on the previous turn. In this case, there is nothing to capture on percent. If the opponent did move a pawn two squares, we must check if the player has a pawn in position to capture it on percent. We'll create an array containing the relevant positions. If the player is white, We must check the skipped position plus southwest. And the skipped position plus southeast. Only a white pawn in either of these positions could capture on percent. If the player is black, The positions are skip post plus northwest and skip post plus northeast. And we'll add a dummy case. Finally, 
we must check if either pawn position contains a pawn ready to capture en passant. We'll do that in a helper method called has pawn in position. It needs the current player, the pawn positions, and the skipped position. So this method returns true if the given player has a pawn which can move to skip pose and capture on percent. We only have to check the positions in the pawn positions array. And only if they are inside the board. In the loop, we get the piece at the current position. If it's null, belongs to the opponent, or isn't a pawn, we continue immediately to the next position. Otherwise, if we get past that, there is a pawn with the correct color in position to capture on percent. But it can only do so if it doesn't leave the king in check. So to test that, we create the on percent move. And if it's legal to make, then we return true. Otherwise, if we make it past both positions without finding a pawn that can capture on percent, we return false. Perfect. Now let's scroll down to can capture on percent. And return the result of has pawn in position. Now we can easily check a player's casting rights and whether he can capture on percent or not. With this in place, we are now ready to implement the threefold repetition rule. We'll do that in the next and possibly final part of this tutorial. See you then.